Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi. Uh, you know, up until this point, we've discussed Lightroom as being kind of the best or the most important part of Bridge, but really all just combined with a stripped down version of Photoshop and, and kind of more like a, an enhanced version of Photoshop Camera Raw. The problem with thinking of it that way is that it kind of lends itself to the idea that Lightroom in and of itself isn't a very powerful editor. Uh, well, that couldn't be more untrue. Uh, Lightroom is actually extremely powerful, and like I said before, 90 to 95 percent of the images that we deliver to our clients finished are done strictly in Lightroom alone. But I wanted to get you guys kind of excited and show you just how many different effects and what you can do in Lightroom. Uh, and you'll, I think you'll be kind of pleasantly surprised that there is quite a bit of advanced stuff you can do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Lightroom. And again, guys, in this tutorial, we're not going to go into detail as to how we did each one of these effects. It's mainly just to give you guys an idea of, of how powerful Lightroom is and really to get you guys kind of excited about everything you can do with this one piece of software. Okay, so going to our first image, I'm going to double click on this just to enlarge it and then go to my develop mode. I'm going to click the reset button just so you can see nothing happens, meaning that this is the raw file without any additional settings applied to it after import. So here's the reset, nothing happens to it, okay? So what I've done here is if I go back to my thumbnail view, as I can see that I've created a bunch of different copies. I'm going to zoom out one step so you can see them all. Uh, there's eight total copies of that original raw image, and these are what we call virtual copies, or what Lightroom calls virtual copies, which is just that. It's, a, it's not an actual copy of the image. What it is is it's, a, it's saving a new setting file, um, and it's referring to that original image and saying, I want you to render a preview of that image using the settings that are specified in this virtual copy. Okay, so a virtual copy is, is very small, they're information only, and they can be edited, deleted, whatever you want without affecting that original at all. Alright, so let's go to our first one. This is our original raw file. I'm going to go from that to our next image. This is the first virtual copy, which is just a color corrected version of that first image. This is what our studio would consider color correct. Everybody's going to be different and have their own preferences, so I'll leave it at that. This next image is that same color corrected image, only I've burned it down more, made it a little more contrasty, a little, just made it pop a little bit more. This next image is what I call a Hollywood orange teal effect. It's kind of, the, kind of an effect that you see in a lot of Hollywood movies uh, where they leave the subjects kind of more orange, drop the backgrounds to a, a teal color. And I've gone down and dropped saturation on this one to create more of a vintage look to this image, kind of a, a washed uh, image. In this one, I've taken our original, I've turned it into a black and white. And in the next virtual copy, I've taken our black and white and cross process it so it's a duotone black and white. It has some, some color tones in the highlights and shadows. In the next image, if you zoom in close, you can see I've added quite a bit of grain to it. And then I've dropped the shadows, I've dropped the saturation, and kind of deepened the blacks quite a bit to make it into a nice little vintage looking shot. And the next one, it might be a little bit hard to see with this one, but this next one is a, a tilt shift or a lens baby kind of imitation. Um, so if you go back and you look at our original one, you can see that how the detail here drops off really quickly in our lens baby version. All right, again, all these effects were created in Lightroom. We haven't gone into Photoshop at all. Now Lightroom also has some really powerful local adjustment tools, which are great for small touch-ups. Uh, I want to briefly skim those real fast just to show you guys that we can even do small touch-ups just directly right in Lightroom. Now, let me actually pick this picture. It's a little bit darker because it's a little more pleasing to the eye, I feel. Um, now, this client, these clients are absolutely gorgeous just the way they are. They don't really need any additional work. But let's say, perhaps, that we wanted to remove this little freckle from the skin. Maybe it's a blemish. Maybe it's a freckle. Whatever it is, Lightroom is great at removing small little blemishes and little imperfections like this from an image. It could be a piece of trash in the background, it could be something on their face, it could be whatever it is, and it's going to do an amazing job of removing those. Check this out. I'm going to click off. You can see that there's nothing left. We just healed them all out without having to take this into Photoshop. Let's say that we wanted to soften the skin a little bit. We see a little bit too much detail in the skin. Well, we can also do that using our brushes in Lightroom. All right. Just quickly go over that real fast. I'll show you the before and after so you can see what it does. Here's before, here's after, before, after. Lightroom is great with these kind of small touch-up work. And, and these local adjustments can not only be used to make touch-ups, but we can also use them in artistic manners, which I'm going to show you guys in later tutorials. 
So hopefully you guys are a little bit more excited about just how powerful Lightroom is and how you can create amazing works of art without even having to go into Photoshop.